Welcome to Third Academy. This little mini course is how to start a Web3 newsletter. I know that many people want to start a newsletter but don't know how, and this uh, is going to tell you everything about really getting started and growing your newsletter. So we're going to cover the basics of starting, just getting started. Uh, we're going to cover Web2 and Web3 newsletter tools topic suggestions, and how to grow that newsletter so that you have readers and subscribers. I'm Carly. I'm Community Manager and Social Media Manager at Third Academy, and I'm so happy to be bringing this to you today. So why would you start a newsletter? We're going to get into all of these three points during the little uh, discussion uh, course that we're having today. So why would you start a newsletter? We're going to learn why. It's important as a Web3 marketing tool. We're going to dive into how and the tools that you're going to use, learn how to plan and start a newsletter. And then we're going to get into how do you actually get subscribers. So learn how to market your newsletter effectively and grow your audience. So why would you start a newsletter? There's a lot of newsletters in the world today. Why would you personally, you or your business, need to start a newsletter? Well, newsletters actually help you to become an authority on a topic. You could think of it like literally building a library. If you choose to build your newsletter on one specific topic or industry, over time, people will be able to revisit that newsletter and look at all of the different content that you've amassed. And really, you now have become the authority figure for your industry. Uh, and it's really easy to just start that newsletter and get going. So you are able to build your authority. The next is, depending on why you're wanting to build a newsletter, you could do it to display your writing skills, right? If you're a copywriter, a content writer, a creative writer of any kind, and you're wanting to put your work out there, a newsletter is a great place to display those skills to people. Uh, the third is that you can grow an audience. If you're wanting to create a business, sell a product or a service, or really grow an audience in order to do something else with it, I know a lot of people might grow an audience to then sell a book or to sell a course or to do something else. Having an audience is a great place to start. And if you're wanting to grow a community, an audience is really what you need to begin with. You'd also grow your email list. If you're wanting to do any kind of email marketing in the future and you need a specific audience and an email list, a newsletter is a great place to start. Uh, something that Rosie from Rosie Land likes to say is that a newsletter is also a form of community. And especially as we get into these different Web3 tools that you can use to um, start your newsletter, you'll start to see that communities can form just from a newsletter. So here are some general things to consider when starting your newsletter. So the first thing is general theme. This is something that you could write about for a long time, something that you're really not going to get bored with, and it's the overall theme of your newsletter. Now I will say that you, you can choose one general theme and then you can have some niche subtopics. For example, I personally run a newsletter called Invisible Landscape. And it's basically about technology and culture. And then within that newsletter, there's subtopics like cryptocurrency, Web3, and creative, like coming together in order to use those tools. So you can choose a large general theme, which we'll get into, and then explore amongst that theme. Next, you want to consider your goals. Now, different people start newsletters for different reasons, and your goals are going to really be that jumping off point for you. So are you starting this to showcase your skills because you want a job? I know a lot of people that would start a newsletter to showcase their writing skills and then use that newsletter when applying for content writing jobs or copywriting jobs. Um, maybe you want to break into the community management field and you start a newsletter all about community management and then you can use that newsletter as part of your portfolio when applying for jobs. So that's a great reason to start a newsletter. Maybe you want to start a course or sell a product or build your audience, right? You have to think about what is your goal for starting this newsletter. And then the third thing to consider is your audience. 
who are you trying to reach? Who would be most interested in reading this? One of the newsletters that I personally follow is a newsletter that gives people all the writing jobs of the week. So who is subscribing to that newsletter? Well, probably journalists and freelance writers and people who want access to writing jobs. So if you find your target audience, you'll be able to market your newsletter in the future much more easily than if you just said, well, I'm writing to anyone and everyone because then it becomes too broad and you don't really know why people would read your specific newsletter. You kind of need something that's going to help you stand out and be a little bit different. So here are some general theme ideas, and I tried to keep these themes, you know, related to Web3. But of course, you can go beyond Web3. If you have another um, hobby or interest that you want to tie into a newsletter that you're building, by all means, go ahead. These are just Web3 related. So you could do a crypto news newsletter, NFT news, Web3 community building, community management, NFT project reviews, Web3 storytelling, gamification, token deep dives, and of course, broadly, education. So here's an example of a newsletter that is hosted on Substack, and it's called Women in Web3. And the display that you're seeing here, they're using the magazine display. So on Substack, it allows you to have kind of different displays. You can display it kind of like a normal newsletter where it shows up in a list. Or you can show it in a magazine style. And personally, that's my favorite style. And this is one of my favorite newsletters, Women in Web 3. And this is kind of how it looks when you, when you see it. So I wanted to show this example. It's kind of very cool to look at. Then we have this uh, NFT Times, which is also hosted on Substack, and it's more of the list style. So as you saw, Women in Web 3 was kind of magazine style. This is more list style, both offered on Substack. And this example is the Neuron hosted on Beehive. So the Neuron is a newsletter that is really focused on artificial intelligence. Peter Huang, who runs this newsletter, uh, puts it out every single day, and he is sharing every single thing you could think of on artificial intelligence, right? So this one is AI versus legal interns. Bing gets exposed. He talks about different AI tools that are coming out. So that's his, his niche is artificial intelligence. So these uh, are your goals and wanted outcomes. We're just going to dive a little bit deeper in here for a minute. So if you want to become an authority figure, you can do that by building your library of content around your specific topic. And if you want to be that authority figure, I really do suggest niching down on a certain topic or interest, right? Like we saw in the previous example, Peter Huang, it grew his newsletter on artificial intelligence. And now uh, probably if he continues with that, he will be an authority figure in the artificial intelligence world. Um, so that's a great reason to do it. Then is audience, to build your audience that will read your content, either attend your Twitter spaces, watch your YouTube videos. A newsletter is a great platform because what you can do is you can write about a topic, send it out to your subscribers. You can also attach uh, links to your upcoming Twitter spaces, links to your YouTube videos, and from there you can start to build people actually watching your content, and it becomes this... Um, content loop and it's, it's really amazing how people do this so if you want to build a youtube channel or you want to build up twitter spaces or any other goal that you might have in terms of building an audience a newsletter can help you with that um and part of your portfolio we talked we did touch on this briefly but just to come back to this i think a newsletter is a really underrated tool for portfolio building um, because you're building a library of content that showcases that you're actively thinking about this topic, that you're deep diving into this topic, that you're talking to other people uh, in this field, and you're showcasing how much knowledge and interest you actually have. And why would an employer not want to hire somebody who has written, you know, 30 pieces of content on a certain topic, opposed to somebody who hasn't? 
Um, so your newsletter is a great portfolio builder, especially when applying for jobs. You can add your portfolio at the bottom of your resume or in your cover letter or even anywhere in your application. And then finally for sales, right? If you build an email list through your newsletter, you can actually sell products and services to your subscribers. Uh, let's say you write an ebook or you create a mini course or something like that. Your subscribers, because they're already invested in your content and in, in you, are more likely to purchase something from you. So when thinking about your target audience, I usually try to say, you know, come up with two different target audiences and see which one fits for your newsletter, where you're going, right? Because you can have two different people that have the same interest. Are you helping these people? So um, you would think about what are their profiles and personas? Where do they hang out online? What kind of books do they read? What kind of YouTube videos do they watch? Um, where are they going to school? You know, all of those types of things. And why would they turn to you and your newsletter for a solution to their problem? So, for example, let's say you have a community management newsletter. Who would the target audience be? Well, it would probably be existing community managers who are looking to learn more about the field. And it would be up and coming community managers, people who are wanting to get into the field. So now that you know there's two groups of people, existing community managers and up and coming community managers, you can write to those two different people. They're probably going to need different types of content, but your newsletter can kind of be a general catch all for community management. So you would write newsletter topics geared towards existing community managers in the form of, hey, here's a new community management tool. Here's how I grew my audience and filtered people into my community this month. Here's what I did for the um, holidays this month with my community. Here's some ideas in order to um, get more engagement in your community. You know, that, those types of things. And then with up and coming community managers, you could focus your newsletter and content on how do you become a community manager? Where do you get education for community management? Do you need education to be a community manager? You know, all those questions. So if you have your target audience kind of decided and planned out, all of the content that you produce for your newsletter will be kind of easier to, to write. So now is the time kind of to choose your platform, right? We went over what is the topic of your newsletter, why are you going to start your newsletter? What are your goals? And who are you actually going to be talking to? Now is the time to set up your newsletter. So here's some of the most common um, newsletter platforms. The first two up here are Web 2, I would say, because they don't really have any Web 3 integrations. So Beehive is an excellent newsletter tool if you want to check it out later. Um, I know the co-founder, Tyler, follows everybody that starts a newsletter on Twitter, and they're really great with their support. It's really easy to set up, and it has a really cool scroll feature that tells you how much longer you have left to read the page that you're on, so it's kind of interesting. Then Substack is really the most commonly used newsletter feature, I would say, right now. Um, you can set it up to have like the list view or the magazine view and it does have a community feature because they've set up a chat so all of your newsletter subscribers also have access to this chat area where they can chat and get together and um, it kind of goes beyond the even the comments on individual newsletter articles and it also has a podcasting feature so if you ever wanted to also start a podcast in uh, addition to your newsletter it has that feature built in, which is really cool. Um, then these two below are, I would say, Web3 newsletter features that, um, or platforms that you could explore if you wanted to kind of go deeper into like the Web3 um, newsletter ecosystem. So mirror.xyz is a publishing platform. It allows you to publish newsletters or single pieces of content and it allows readers to mint the single pieces of content. So let's say if you started a newsletter and one of the newsletters that you published 
is getting a lot of traction, people are really interested in it, your readers could actually mint that single piece of content and have it with them in their own wallet, which is really interesting. Uh, and of course, it allows you to have an, another like source of income for your content. And then paragraph XYZ is a mintable publishing to the blockchain. So it's kind of like mirror xyz uh, it allows you to write newsletters articles and single pieces and if you want to explore you know these more web3 options i would say take your time look into them explore them read other newsletters that are using them and see if it's right for you so now i will talk briefly about how to grow your newsletter um to grow your newsletter the best thing that I personally have done, and so I'm going to talk about this from a personal standpoint, is to use other platforms to leverage growth and get subscribers to my newsletter. So you can use other platforms like Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Medium. And I will say that LinkedIn has a built-in newsletter feature. So if you are starting a newsletter and you already do have an audience on LinkedIn, you can start a newsletter there relatively easily it is built into the platform, so you don't get access to your subscribers' emails, but every time you send out a newsletter, it does show up in their email, and it shows up in the inbox. For a lot of newsletters, unless the subscribers change it, it will show up in their spam box. So I kind of do like the LinkedIn newsletter feature because um, it shows up directly to subscribers' emails in their inbox. So you can use these platforms to link to your newsletter and you always want to have some form of call to action where you let people know, hey, I have a newsletter. If you like this kind of content, you can subscribe. You'll get an email every single week and that's how you grow. Basically, growing a newsletter is just reminding people as you have a newsletter, putting out quality content and growing it over time. Um, so on LinkedIn, we talked about the Neuron Newsletter by Peter Huang, which is all about artificial intelligence. What I found interesting on LinkedIn was he doesn't have a very long about section. You know how most people on their LinkedIn profile have an about section that says, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I do, and they go on and on and on. Peter Huang is really trying to drive people to his newsletter, which is hosted on Beehive. And he's trying to build his email list, right? So all he has in his about section on LinkedIn is I write your new favorite AI newsletter. And then he has his link to his newsletter. That's it. That's it. That's his about. That's what he does. That's his about. And it drives people to say, oh, that's kind of interesting. And they click on it. And then, of course, they subscribe. So if you're using Instagram, of course, you could link your newsletter in the link in bio or if you use a link in bio service like um beacons or linktree or something like that you would add your newsletter in there on youtube i would suggest putting your newsletter in the top section um when people go to youtube the on the right hand side usually there's little icons at the top that you can click on to take you to their instagram their twitter and their website right add your newsletter there you could also write articles on Medium, long form articles, and whenever possible, link to your newsletter, just like people do when they write content, when they write articles for different um, publications, they link out to different sources. Here's where you can link out to your newsletter. And there you're building an authority, you're growing an audience, and people subscribe to your newsletter. Now, I would suggest using Twitter. I like Twitter because Twitter is also a um, written platform, right? In order to make content on Twitter, most people have to write. So you would create a thread basically on a certain topic, one that you've recently explored in your newsletter. And then at the end of the thread, you can include a call to action and you would link to your newsletter. So if you like this thread, you might like my newsletter, Invisible Landscape. I share a collection of interesting things for creatives each week. 
And then I have links to my newsletter here. And basically it tells you a little bit about the newsletter. It's all things deliciously mind-bending in tech culture and the creator economy straight to your inbox. And uh, then you can have this little button and it gives people like a really easy way to subscribe. And that's really what we're talking about here, right? If you've built an audience or you are actively building an audience on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on any other social platform, on YouTube, or you're writing articles on Medium, basically anywhere else, you have to link out to your newsletter so that people can find it and subscribe. So here are some just general brief tips as we're closing. Stay consistent, right? You have to pick a date and time to publish each week. You can do it weekly, you can do it bi-weekly, you can do it once a month, but whatever it is, stick to the date and time that you want to publish and be consistent with it. That way the people that subscribe start to know your consistency and it will grow over time. I would say have fun with it. A lot of people overthink starting a newsletter, overthink the kind of information that they've um, put into the newsletter. So just have fun with it. If you are enjoying it and you're really putting your passion into it and you're putting quality uh, ideas out there, um, it will grow. Just give it some time. You can improve as you go. It doesn't have to be perfect right away. Uh, you can listen to feedback, but I would caution on that. Like, listen to feedback in order to make it better, but don't change something drastically just because somebody else said to, right? You know, you have to follow your own instincts. Watch the data. So data will usually tell you if a, pro if a topic is interesting or not. Uh, if a lot of people are subscribing because of certain posts, um, that tells you that this is an interesting topic that maybe you might want to dive into and explore a little bit deeper. Uh, you can create graphics and visuals that go along with your newsletter that people might become intrigued with. I know on LinkedIn, this is a really great way to get people to subscribe is if you have a topic and you share your newsletter, but you've also created this interesting graphic to go along with it, the graphic usually will draw people's attention in. Um, again, you can also build a community along with your newsletter and you can explore different writing styles, which is also fun. So that was kind of the gist of how you would start a Web3 newsletter. You're going to have to explore different Web3 tools, um, explore mirror.xyz, explore paragraph.xyz, um, explore the topics that you're interested in. But over time, as you develop your newsletter, you'll get more traction, you'll get more readers, people will start sharing it. Um, I would say give it time. A good newsletter really does take that time so if it hasn't taken off in 30 days keep going it will take you know sometimes up to six months in order to really get some traction and start building that audience with your newsletter but stay consistent and go back and review this and go over the steps of deciding what you're going to write about who your target audience is all that stuff and uh let me know share your newsletters once you've started them in the third academy discord um i'm there to offer any tips uh offer any help that you might need so thank you so much for joining us for this little mini class and i hope to see you again soon